Welcome to Excerpts from the Open Forum. On this program, we'll hear Mr. Harold Camping answering pre-recorded questions regarding issues from the Bible. Here's our first question. Um, I've been listening to you for some time now, and I'm a new believer, and I've been studying the Word. And I'm very confused when you say, come out of the churches, because um, I'm, I don't know very much about the Word, but I do know that you're not supposed to add anything to the Word. So can you explain to me where you get the come out of the churches from? Well, it's, it's actually a very, very big subject. But, for example, we read in, in uh, Matthew 24, verse 15, when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place. Now, the only holy place... That, uh, that has been in the world is where the Bible is. And the Bible throughout the church age was under the caretaking of the local congregations. They were to send that gospel into the whole world. And now the abomination of desolation, which is a reference to Satan ruling, is there. And then it says, when that happens, let those who are in Judea. And Judea was a, a, in the Old Testament, was a, the land that uh, typified the, externally typified the kingdom of God. In the New Testament era, it isn't the land of Judea. It is the local congregations. And so they here are called Judea because the local congregations typify the kingdom of God. Let those who, in our, who are in Judea flee to the mountains. And the mountains have to do with fleeing to Christ, as we read in Psalm 121 and Psalm 123, uh, fleeing to Christ, and uh, because uh, He is the only one who is is uh, trustworthy, and we flee to Christ by going right to the Bible, because that is where we find Christ, right in the Word of God. Don't you say? Don't you feel the radio is a form of church? I'm sorry? Isn't a radio the form of church? Is this how you have church through the radio? Oh, 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 no. You see, the church is defined by the Bible. Okay. Uh, first and of all, you, if you why read... Why do you define excuse the me, radio? You... Excuse me. If you read First Timothy 3, it talks there about bishops and deacons or elders and deacons and gives very careful instructions as to how they are to be chosen and in other places you find what their task is and how they are the, to oversee the congregation and and uh, and uh, we are to uh, 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 be under their spiritual rule uh, and uh, they in turn have to be in charge of ministering the uh, ceremonial laws of water baptism and the Lord's table. That's all. Uh, God has given very careful rules for what constitutes a local congregation. Now, if a group of people come together and they have someone teaching them or if they sing songs together, that does not make them a church. If, if they had a membership and if they uh, had appointed people who were, had spiritual oversight over these people, yes, then they had become a church. But uh, just simply to meet together, that does, that does not make you a church. Uh, there's no one that has any spiritual authority over anyone else. I, under, I thank you for that, but you didn't answer this question. What do you, what is, you're sharing the gospel through the radio, and you're telling people to, this is what you've read, and you've come up, and you've done research, and you've been studying the Word, and that God has revealed through the Word, because the truth is the Word of God. But you're saying that only what you're share, sharing through the radio is the truth. So um, why isn't that if the, the Word of God is being shared in the churches and pastors who are also studying the Word as long as you have or, or maybe not as long, they're not, you're going to tell me God is not revealing them the truth through the Bible, only well, through the radio station, only through your radio station is God really... How about if the airways were dead? Where would God share it? Where would, where would we come out from then? Would we have to turn off the radio next? Well, I just need for you to it, clarify that. Yeah, well, you're asking good questions. You know, the problem is not that a pastor may not be sharing truth. He may be sharing truth. 
but uh, the you see the pastor is part of the church the local congregation and god is no longer present there he is no longer blessing that word and so he he can be as uh, he can share a lot of truth but it's it's not enough just to share truth you want that truth to be where god can uh, use it to bring people to salvation that's the whole point of sharing truth and and god has absented himself from every local congregation it's really surprising uh, you know i say this again and again because i'm so much in awe at this but when we read about jesus when he was bringing the gospel now he was the perfect preacher every sermon he preached was absolutely perfect because he was god and yet virtually nobody became saved because God was not applying the Word of God to the hearts of anybody. Then uh, on Pentecost morning or afternoon in, uh, in Acts chapter 2, Peter, who was obviously not nearly the preacher Jesus was, preaches one sermon and about 3,000 people are saved because the Holy Spirit has been poured out. That is now God is applying the word of God to the hearts of people. And that's the problem with pastors. They're part of the local congregations which are no longer, uh, the Holy Spirit is no longer operating there any longer. Now, in, when we teach on radio uh, and, and we're not a part of any kind of a local congregation, God does teach that there's a great multitude that will become saved. And isn't it interesting that when we study the history of the world that until 200 years ago uh, there were uh, we knew nothing at all about radio we knew nothing at all about electronics and and all kinds of uh, uh, things that we know uh, take for granted today uh, the the fastest uh, means of locomotion uh, locomotion was a fast horse uh, and uh, that was the same as it was 2,000 years ago or 5,000 years ago. And, uh, and uh, that's the way it was uh, until as early as, as late as 200 years ago. And yet at the same time that God was preparing the local congregations for their end, God was also opening up the whole matter of communication so that today... Uh, there are Bibles everywhere, and, and, and there are still some nations that don't have a lot of Bibles, but we can blanket the world with the gospel so that uh, uh, it's not necessary that people have to come to a building uh, to hear a sermon. Uh, they can be in their homes, and they can hear uh, the Word of God uh, right there in their homes, and, and God has, has fitted it all together so that what was happening in the secular world uh, would, would be exactly uh, uh, in accord with his plan for the sending out of the gospel during this time of the latter reign when, there are no, when God is not using local churches anymore. Can, so can the Lord also use movies and uh, Internet to, to spread the gospel as you use the radio to spread the gospel? So... But, God is not using the churches anymore, so he's going to start using mass media, you know, um, um, Internet, radio. He's, and he's there's not, one he... more comment before you, you go on, because you um, obviously don't let me finish. You also state that uh, fellowship, we don't have the fellowship. I, I listened to you a couple of days ago. You said we don't have the fellowship anymore, that we could only fellowship with the Word of God, because that's whom we should be fellowshipping with. So really what we should be doing is turning on our radios, listening to you tell us what God has spoken to you through the word of truth, through the Bible, and helping you and help us interpret what God is trying to tell us because he's using you, obviously, because it's your radio station, and that we should get out of the churches, listen to you on the radio, send our type to you on the radio because it spreads widely more because it's through the radio, and that's the only way God can use, only your radio station, because God is being boxed in only into your radio station. Is that what you're saying? No, that's your interpretation. That's, that's, that's interpret Excuse me, excuse me. I mean, you, wanna help, you want that kind of an interpretation. There are many individuals who are searching the Bible and uh, doing their best to teach others 
And, and wherever there is someone that is faithful to the Word of God, they, uh, uh, they should be teaching others. That is the, but they have no spiritual authority over anybody any more than I have no spiritual authority over any listener. I, I simply have, I, it happens to be that Family Radio has a little larger and a much larger forum, uh, a platform from which to send out the gospel. That's God's business. Uh, that isn't because we're so smart or anything, and I don't know why God uh, has done this with Family Radio, but he has, and so that's the way it is. But that doesn't mean we're the only ones in the world who are teaching. And the fact is, if you listen carefully, I'll say again and again, don't trust me. You search this out in the Scriptures. I will simply uh, uh, try to assist as best as possible, and I'll try to be as faithful as I can to the Word of God. But the whole point of Family Radio is that you might become more and more interested in the Bible. God is the one who has to open your spiritual eyes. I can't open the spiritual eyes of anybody. I, in fact, Family Radio doesn't have a, have a, uh, a goal of trying to get people saved. That's not our business. Our business is to simply send the gospel out knowing that God will save those that he plans to save. That is God's business. And in the process of sending out the gospel, we also try to assist people in understanding some of the Bible, but constantly emphasizing, don't trust me, trust the Bible. And, uh, and uh, God has raised up Internet. He's raised up movies. No, no, you can't teach the gospel with movies because uh, uh, then you begin to make, uh, 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 to make any kind of a drama. You end up with bringing lies and so on that, uh, that there's no way that you can make that fit into the gospel. But uh, uh, it's just simply teaching the word of God. You are listening to excerpts from the Open Forum on Family Radio. Mr. Harold Camping is answering pre-recorded questions about the Bible. If you'd like to hear more of Mr. Camping's teaching, you can hear and even download Open Forum broadcasts, Bible studies, and more. Just go to FamilyRadio.com and click on Audio Archives. Let's continue now with another question. Hi, Brother Camping. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good. I was wondering if you can explain to me um, Zechariah chapter uh, 14. Zechariah chapter 14, yes. Yeah, it has um, 21 verses in it, but um, it seems like this is talking about the end times. I'm not sure exactly, and I want to hear Well, you it is. Today. It is, but I'll tell you, it is a very difficult chapter. Yeah. Uh, it... Uh, it uh, uh, it's, most of it we can understand. There's a few places that um, are still a little difficult to understand. But it is definitely talking about the end of the world when, when there would be a division in the churches. Uh, it's talking about uh, the nations coming against Jerusalem to battle. And then God says something very strange. He says, the city shall be taken, and the, I'm reading verse 2, right. and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and yet the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And what is God talking about? Well, the fact is the Jerusalem that God is speaking about is the, is the, the external a representation of the kingdom of God as it's represented by the local congregations. And the true believers, they are the remnant that are not cut off from the eternal Jerusalem, that is from uh, the uh, uh, kingdom of the eternal kingdom of God. Uh, and yet they are brought into captivity, that is, they are, are, are cast away from the uh, the uh, external representation of the kingdom of God. They are driven out of the local congregations. Yes. Okay. And uh, it talks about another part where it says um, about they shouldn't prophesy anymore. And um, let's see. Oh, this is Zechariah 13. 
And it shall be in that day that every prophet will be ashamed of his vision when he prophesies. Uh, they will not wear a robe of coarse hair to deceive. Uh, what verse are you reading? I'm reading chap- Zechariah chapter 13, verse 4. Um, yeah, and it shall come five. to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his vision. When he hath mm-hmm. prophesied, neither shall he wear a rough garment to deceive. Mm-hmm. But he shall say, I am no prophet, I am, no, I am a husband man. For man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. And and uh, th- there again, this is a very difficult passage because it goes on. What are these wounds in right, my hands? Right, that's what I wanted to know about. Yeah. And that, that is talking about the, the uh, that's identifying with the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life for our sins. He is the shepherd that was smitten here. Uh, and... Uh, and uh, but we'd have to go through it verse by verse, word by word, and I'm just not qualified to do that right now. It's a, it is a, uh, it is, a, it is a difficult passage. Now, of course, you must remember when Christ was crucified, he had, he could no longer prophesy. That is, he, uh, he uh, became one of us. The, he became sin, and was under the wrath of God, and and. That, I think, is also in view in these verses. Good evening, Brother Camping. I have a question in uh, Genesis 8, verse 7. Genesis, 8, Genesis verse 7. chapter 8, verse 7. There we read, and we read that in, uh, the uh, flood waters have never com- completely destroyed the earth in Noah's day, and Noah, of course, and his family are safe in the ark, along with two of each of the uh, various kinds of animals. And and uh, on, in verse 7, or let's start with verse 6, And it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Now, what is your question? Uh, is, is the raven uh, a, a picture of Satan? No, the raven is a picture of of uh, sin because raven, the word raven, or the creature raven, the bird raven, was an unclean bird typifying those who are not saved. By this, God is underscoring the fact that just because he cleansed the wor- world of the wicked people who lived at that time, which indeed had become grievous in God's sight, nevertheless, sin would still continue. And so we have two birds uh, typifying uh, what what is happening. On the one hand, we have the raven uh, that goes to and fro uh, and, uh, and uh, indicating that sin is still going to be there because it is uh, in the hearts of every human being. Uh, that infection of sin didn't change. And then also after that he sent out the dove, remember? And the dove represents the Holy Spirit. That he also, uh, And the Holy Spirit ha- is active in saving people. So in these uh, two incidents, the sending forth of the raven and the dove, we see uh, spiritually... Uh, that the plan of salvation continues. On the one hand, sin is everywhere. On the other hand, God is going to save a people for himself. Hello. Yes, uh, brother. I just had a question. Uh, The other time I was listening to the radio and I heard you mention something about... um, how at uh, churches they uh, put their hands on their forehead to give them the Holy Ghost and they fall back. And you mentioned the fact that, that's, uh, that that comes from the devil. It, yes. It's learned yes. from him. That's all together from Satan. There's, uh, it, is, uh, it is in churches that have a different kind of a gospel. You see, the true gospel, and there's only one true gospel, it is structured and determined by the Bible alone and in its entirety. The moment that any kind of a religion or a gospel has what they consider to be their divine authority, 
coming from a source other than the Bible, you immediately have another kind of a gospel. And that is, then it won't be the true gospel. Now, those who practice this uh, business of falling backwards, uh, they uh, have a gospel where they believe the Bible is the Word of God. They pick and choose certain things from the Bible. And they also believe that God is still bringing revelation today in a dream or a vision or through a voice or through a tongue, through an unknown language of some kind. Uh, and uh, this, the, this uh, they believe with all their heart. And so their divine authority that structures and determines their kind of a gospel is a different authority than the Bible alone and in its entirety. And so it's not surprising that therefore they come up with these kind of practices. And as a matter of fact, that is a supernatural activity that goes on. And it is, uh, it is because Satan he rules in those churches and he has been given authority from God to uh, perform those kind of uh, spiritual activities. And, and yet it is, it is uh, evident, therefore, that it's not the gospel of the Bible at all. Uh, you had uh, mentioned uh, the fact that it, it mentioned it somewhere in the Bible how Satan, when uh, Jesus was crucified, Satan fell back. Well, that's how they learn it. Uh, where where well, is it in the Bible? In the well, you see, when when uh, when uh, if we go to Second uh, Kings chapter two, for example, or Second or Kings chapter one, we read there when the wicked king of Israel came to take Elijah. Then Elijah, uh, 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 he sent a captain with 50 men. Then Elijah called down from heaven, and they were instantly killed. Uh, they were struck down by fire from heaven. When we read Revelation 20, when the camp of the saints is surrounded by the wicked of the world, then fire from heaven comes down and destroys them. Now, here is the Lord Jesus. He is coming out of the Garden of Gethsemane. And uh, he is God himself. And here are the wicked temple servants that are going to take him. Uh, uh, they want to bind him and bring him to be tried. And, and uh, uh, Jesus should have called down fire from heaven and destroyed them right on the spot, just like Elijah did, or like we read in Revelation 20. But he couldn't do that because he had to be brought to trial. He had to be crucified. That was part of God's plan for him. And so when uh, we read in John uh, chapter 18, John 18, uh, 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 when uh, Jesus asked them in verse, For whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am. Now, that's a name for God. God is the great I Am. And Jesus was effectively saying, I am God. I am God. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with him, them. Now, that's a very important statement. Because earlier on, we read that Judas had been infilled by Satan. So Satan is there, present, right there, while this scenario is going on. Now, as soon as he had said unto them, I am they went backward and fell to the ground. So, Satan is learning something. He's learned right here that falling backward to the ground is equivalent to calling down fire from heaven. Satan can't call down fire from heaven, literally. We know that in the closing chapters of First Kings because... I uh, remember uh, Elijah was on Mount Carmel, and there were 450 prophets of Baal, and the, the contest was who could call down fire from heaven to burn the, the uh, bull calf that was on the altar that had been built, and the 450 prophets of Baal, who represented Satan, could not. They could not. They worked all day and yelled and screamed and cut themselves, and it, no fire came down. And then Elijah prayed a simple prayer, and fire came down and destroyed the bull calf and the altar and, and uh, everything all together. Only God can bring judgment. In other words, to call down fire, that has to do with bringing judgment. Now, Satan desperately wants to be like God and be the judge, 
So he wants to call down fire, but he can't call down fire. But he did learn. If I can get them to fall backward, then it's like I have the, uh, the ability to call down fire. And so that's what we're seeing all over the world today as Satan is operating in these churches, showing that or pr trying to prove that he is the judge of the earth. And that's why he gave, the gave, gave these people the idea to call it slain in the spirit. Slain, that means killed. Killed has to do with judgment, with judgment. And, uh, and there's nothing good about this at all. It is all an, an evidence of the fact that these people are uh, the whole business, the whole business, the whole gospel, every aspect of it is under the judgment of God. Brother Paul, I, I thank you very much for your answer in it. Um, I was um, going to say, um, I, they did put their hands on me when I went to a congregation, and everybody was falling, but I didn't feel like falling myself. So um, they were saying that when they put their hands on you, you feel it, and you kind of like faint. Yeah. But I've asked a couple of people if they actually do feel that, and they've told me they don't. They just say, well, I just fall because everybody else falls. Well, that may be some, but there are a lot of them who... Uh, who uh, have no control over this at all. No control. They simply crumple and, and fall to the ground. That uh, There are a few who want to fall, and so they, uh, they uh, cause themselves to fall. But that's more unusual. 